Alright guys, Mr. Prini here, and uh, here with a video, and uh, yeah, I haven't made one for quite a while, but uh, I thought I'd make one today, I've been meaning to get back into the, sort of the, the process of making videos, trying to make it, uh, trying to make them fairly frequently, um, but yeah, this video today, is just going to be sort of regarding, obviously the hot topic at the moment, which is of course, uh, the, at least in Total War World, it's basically Warhammer Total War, or Total War Warhammer, and uh, just to see the the release itself, and uh, you know, just whether people are going to get it, uh, whether I'm going to get it, and just sort of the thought, sort of things to consider when you when you're sort of buying it. And uh, yeah, I just thought I'd sort of encapsulate that all into this video, and uh, just sort of let you know if you are on the fence of just some of the things you can do, uh, if you are, you know, the best way to proceed, if you are on the fence about whether to buy it. Um, but yeah, I mean, as a lot of you probably know, uh, if you are long-time viewers of my channel, um, the initial the initial videos that I uploaded were Total War based, so it was Rome Total War, that was the first Total War actual game that I really played. Um, I played Medieval, the original Medieval, but I didn't really play that that much. Uh, yeah, Rome's, Rome was the original one that I got into and played the hell, hell out of, really. And... Um, yeah, I was a big Total War fan up until, you know, the start of Rome 2, and then, obviously, Rome 2 was just an absolute disaster, and, uh, I mean, I made the, the video, I made a video last year just regarding whether Rome 2 was playable at all for me, and, you know, it just wasn't, just absolutely wasn't, so, you know, I lost a lot of trust in Creative Assembly with regards to, you know, just them as a whole, and it stemmed a lot from Rome 2, just how that turned out, it was a disaster from start until present day, really, for me, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I literally, I made that video last year, and I haven't played that game at all since, and, um, yeah, so it really, it really, really damaged my, my opinion of them, and the Turbo series as a whole, um, because, I mean, it's just, it's just horrible, I mean, I didn't enjoy that game at all, and, um, but yeah, then, of course, then, of course, um, they drew me right back in when they announced Total War Warhammer, which of course uh, was announced last year, and it was, I mean, it was huge, simply because uh, I'm a fan, of course, I mean, I'm previously, before Rome 2, I was a massive fan of the Total War series, uh, but I'm also, you know, from in my childhood, I was, a, you know, I played Warhammer a lot, quite a lot, and, you know, just, just the idea of collecting and everything like that. I played Warhammer Fantasy and I also played Warhammer 40k, so I was a big fan in my childhood. And, you know, just the the fact that, that those two things, one thing that was, you know, obviously Fantasy Battles, that was great, uh, it was intertwining with to the Total War series, was fantastic for me. And I mean, uh, I'm not sure if you guys have played it, but there's actually a, a, uh, there's a mod for, uh, basically a mod for, uh, I believe it's Medieval 2 Total War, and uh, it's a Warhammer based mod, so I believe it's Rage of the Dark Gods, I believe. Uh, but it's a Warhammer mod for Medieval 2 Total War, and it's really, really good, so um, yeah, ever since then I've really, really sort of been interested, and the fact that they're actually making this officially is really, that really excited me. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, I was really excited, as I said, and then, of course, they. They made the announcement, of course, of the four factions that were initially going to be in, and that's, of course, the Orcs and Goblins, Vampire Counts, Empire, and Dwarves. And for me personally, I'm a massive fan of Orcs and Goblins. When at least when I was young, like playing playing the tabletop game, and uh, you know I played Orcs and Goblins for fantasy, and I played uh, Space Orcs or just regular Orcs for 40k. So, yeah, the fact they're on in there, and I saw the the gameplay in uh, sort of well the the announcement. Uh, uh, the, was it the release trailer? That's what they call it. Oh, God, uh, yeah, release trailer. And basically, uh, you know, you saw you saw the orcs in there. That was just really exciting for me. Um, and yeah, it's, I'm just really excited for the game. And then, of course, you know, they announced, of course, that Chaos were going to be a pre-order DLC, and it just kind of invoked memories of, you know, the start of Rome 2, essentially. And you know, I know that a lot of people that are fans of the series and they were interested in Rome. Uh, Rome 2 and are now looking to perhaps get Warhammer. You know, they they feel uh, to War Warhammer. They feel the same way with regards to it's following the same lines of that launch. If you see what I mean, with regards to you know the the fact that there's a pre-order DLC. There was that in Rome 2, of course, with the, the Greek city states, and there's also the fact you know that chaos should be in the game to start with. Well, a lot of people think that. I I actually the funny thing is that. 
I understand why people are upset that that they aren't in there because obviously they're a very they're a core race, but I didn't expect them to be in there simply because they weren't in the announce they weren't in the initial trailer. I mean, uh, they were hinted that they're obviously it was they were featured in the trailer, but they weren't announced as a as an actual a faction. So I understand why people were upset, but at the same time, I didn't expect them to be in there. I actually expected them personally to be. They were. I personally expected them to be sort of like a rebel faction, at least in the initial game, uh, because of course there's a trilogy, so I expected them to be a rebel faction, so sort of spawning outside your cities and attacking your cities, attacking your armies, things like that, just basically being a nuisance like the rebels were initially in like Medieval 2, Rome, you know, you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, I mean, I expected either that or, you know, they'd be introduced either as DLC later or they'd be introduced as, you know, in a later tri later game in the trilogy, so there's going to be a trilogy of games that you know they've signed that with Games Workshop have Creative Assembly, or I believe it might be Sega. It's probably Sega, but yeah, this it's a trilogy of games, so I assume they'll be either a Rebel or you know released later in in the trilogy. So uh, yeah, but so, uh, even the fact that if they were DLC, obviously lo loads of people are upset with DLC, but for me personally, I don't actually mind a lot with regards to DLC if a game is good. Like, for example, you know, I play a lot of Paradox games right now. I, pl I play um, I play Europa Universalis, of course. I mean, I'm, Europa Universalis 4, I haven't played it that much recently. But I played it a lot in the past. And I've also tried to get into Crusader Kings. And those games have a lot of DLC. I'm, I'm, I mean, they do. They just do. But I'm happy to pay for those if they are, you know, they help to sort of improve on the initial game experience, which I enjoy. So, you know, if Warhammer... Total War, if Total War Warhammer, whatever you want to call it, uh, I always get mixed up, but yeah, Total War Warhammer, if you, if I enjoy the game, I'd be more than fine with paying DLC, you know, if it's going to enhance the gaming experience, um, you know, of course, if it doesn't enhance the gaming experience, you know, that's, or that's a topic for another day, but you know, um, with Chaos, you know, if it was a later DLC, I'd be fine to pay for that, to be honest, but uh, anyway, I'll stop waffling, but yeah, I mean, so I'm, I was fine with that, but I mean, it was just the case of, it's not really a good way to treat your customers. It's it's kind of a marketing ploy after obviously the disaster of Rome 2. Just the fact that they're kind of sort of forcing your hand into obviously if you don't want to pay for it as DLC, you know, you have to get it. You have to pre-order it essentially. They're kind of it's a forceful marketing ploy really, isn't it? So, um, you know, the fact that they were doing that off the back of a, you know, the horrendous situation regarding Rome 2, you know, I didn't think it was it really didn't it kind of reminded me of you know, the company that we're dealing with here, essentially, you know, Creative Assembly, they're kind of, how much involvement it is from Sega, it's, you don't know, you know, it can be speculated on that Sega are forcing their hand with this, you know, it's, it's debatable, so, I mean, you, you, don't, you just don't know, I mean, so, it's, this kind of just makes you, it reminded me, certainly, and it reminded a lot of other people just of what had happened in the past, and it was following that line, um, and also with regards to, I mean, they've pushed back the actual launch of the release of the game from April to uh, Mar uh, May, sorry. And, you know, it, they say that that's for review purposes. They want to give the, the game to people to be able to review it. But, you know, is it a case of the game, you know, not being quite finished yet? You know, you never know, because Rome 2 certainly wasn't fully functional when you when it when it was initially released. So is that going to be the case with Rome, uh, with a... Warhammer to war to Warhammer. Um, we just don't know. It's 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 very it's nerve wracking and it's a real shame because this game is. I mean, it's funny because as I said, I had a bit of down note with regards to the, the the game as a whole. Following that that situation, I was obviously I didn't find them very reliable. But uh, it's funny. A commenter on on this channel actually they they posted on one of my videos. You know, oh can you you know upload some Total War? So you know, I actually had a look. I just out of curiosity, I had a look into just to see if there was any sort of more information re with regards to the the actual game, the Total Warhammer that was coming out. And, you know, I had a look at some of the footage that Total on the Total War YouTube channel, just re with regards to the gameplay. And it's funny, I looked at this, this it's kind of, they, they, they got me back into it with regards to the Orcs and Goblins. So I had a look at the, there was a, they basically posted some footage from a, the campaign map of, you know, Orcs and Goblins. And it was just, the map, campaign map just there's no other word for it. It just looks absolutely beautiful, and you know I know obviously that's something that they're obviously that it's the developers copy like it's developers footage. They're trying to make it look as good as possible, but that's something that 
it was kind of I hoped it would be that way, and it kind of it is going to be that way. I think this game is going to look actually beautiful, and uh, cause, just because I had a look through the footage, it was you know they actually got an, uh, an hour long stream, I believe. Um, it's a twenty minute uh, portion to de like actually for the Orcs and Goblins that I looked at. I actually linked the video that I looked at in this video description below in the video description below but um basically it shows the variety of you know the the variety that's on the actual campaign map so they're like the mountainous areas the badlands of course for the orcs and goblins you know the empire and uh, it also shows you know for example you know when chaos it shows when chaos spawns that they'll, they'll sort of degrade the map it will it will, it will obviously um you know it'll become chaos I, I don't know how best to say it but it, it will like everything will start dying essentially and uh you know, for example, when a when a uh, when an orc army, so like a war boss, takes over a dwarven province, it shows it in the video that it shows how it changes the settlement. So it will show you know orc orc icon iconography is that a word? I mean orc icons, orc orc figures, things like that, and you know it shows the loot, it shows it looted and more chaotic and. Um, you know, it's I I really like that. And I think that's that's something that was in the Total War, some of the Total War games initially. You know, for example, like in Rome or Medieval, it showed how the settlement changed based on the different factions, but that took it over. If you like change the settlement, uh, so for example, a barbarian settlement it would change when a Romans take took it over, but it's more drastic in this game. It, and I think that's 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 the key is the drastic differences between the factions. So. It's very clear how the landscape changes when every faction takes over, and it's also very clear how, you know, for example, with that chaos, the chaos theme, the, the landscape is more drastically different than for say an empire territory. So, you know, I really like that. That's one thing that really I didn't enjoy about Rome Two was just the fact that it was the campaign map was pretty boring to me. I mean, obviously it was based on the destinations, but with this, it's going to be more down. It's it's gonna be more varied. I I really like that, and I also think the UI itself, the fantasy element, I think it looks really good actually as well. And obviously, it's still subject to change, but from, from what I've seen, it looks quite good. The graphics for me, I'm very happy with the graphics and how they look with regards to the the actual the upcoming game. It's it's mainly just a case case of the gameplay really for me. As I said, you know that release date's been pushed back. Is that a case of you know the game is not finished with regards to the game mechanics, things like that, and obviously what happened with Rome 2 in the past. And um, you know it's 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 just I'm very wary of what to expect with regards to the gameplay. Um, the great thing about it is though is you know a lot of people didn't like Empire. I mean I got it a year after it was actually released. And uh, I actually really enjoyed that game. And one of the reasons I enjoyed that game was because it's kind of the spectacle. You know, the muskets firing. The, and it's the same with Napoleon Total War, right? Like the muskets firing, the cannon shooting, things like that. And you're going to get that with, you're going to get that with, uh, with uh, Warhammer Total War. You're going to get, you're going to. It's basically it brings back the spectacle to the game, and I really like that. And you know, there's just the unique features with regards to the actual. Like the units that have been announced, so for example, orcs and goblins, they've got the Doom Diver catapult, things like that. They've got fanatics. That's great. That's, that's really good. I mean, obviously it's magic in the game. You know, there's a lot of different things. Of course, there's a lot of things that could go wrong because of all those different things. Um, so yeah, it's great that they're in the game, and I feel like that's the variety's there. the The graphics are there. It's just the case of the gameplay. That's that's the main thing that I'm worried about. And uh, I know that's the case for a lot of other people as well. It's just they don't want to have that experience with Rome too. So like, if you buy it straight away, like I did, and you sort of the gameplay is horrible and it's all buggy, and your experience is then just ruined forever, which is what happened with me. Rome two could probably be a good game right now, uh, and you know I just I just wouldn't know because my my experience has been tainted by the release, and you know I'm I'm worried that that's going to be the same case with regards to this game. So. Uh, and I know other people feel the same as well. So I mean, apparently Attila, I haven't actually played that game, but it's apparently the release for that was a bit bit dodgy as well. So you know, you don't want it to be. You don't want it. To, you don't want it to be that case, really. So and it's a shame that we're having that sort of discussion because you know, on the face of it, this game should be good. It should be good. And the fact that we're having the discussion of whether it will will not be with regards to the release, it's it's a real shame because it's got all all the elements of being a good game. 
You know, um, so yeah, I mean, there are a couple of, I mean, if, if, if you're on the fence like me, which I really am on the fence, I don't know whether to buy this game at release, um, if you're on the fence, there's a couple of things you can sort of do. Basically, the first option you can do is you can use, you can exercise what, what, what I'd like to call this, basically the Steam refunds option. So they've got the, they've got a feature now where you can, once you've sort of, if you've bought, bought a game, you can get a refund as, as long as you, you haven't played more than two hours of the game. And you know it's within two weeks of getting that game. So if you if you haven't done that, if you match that criteria of not playing more than two hours, you know you can uh, send you can get a refund for the game if it's something you don't want to continue with. And that way you can get that pre-order DLC, and you know you can have a look at basically. Obviously, you're not going to be able to judge the the game with two hours of gameplay. You can have a look at other people's coverage because basically. You can have a look and just make your own decision regarding all the all the footage that's out there. Um, I mean, some people would suggest to look at reviews. I would I would suggest otherwise, really. So reviews are often they're often tainted by. There's often I mean, for example, you know, with PC gaming, a lot of websites, you know, they they're tainted essentially. They're compromised essentially. So their their viewpoint is a bit tainted. So what I would say is to have a look at actually YouTube footage. There'll be a ton of footage out there which will be quite long clips. So they won't be short clips of good things. There'll be long clips where you can sort of look at campaign walkthroughs and you can see how the game plays in different scenarios and just make an informed decision. That's that's what I would say. That's one option as I said. Another option as I said, I mean Basically, a lot of people, as I said, they, they they didn't enjoy Empire. I enjoyed Empire, and that is probably because I got it a year after release. So what I would say is another option is simply buying it at a later date. And um, sort of following on from that, you can also exercise the fact... Just, just basically take advantage of the fact that Creative Assembly, their games, they do have a lot of sales. And that's Sega in general. They have a, they have a lot of sales on the Steam, where, on the Steam store. So, um, I mean... As of making this video, it's the 14th of March 2016. As of this video, there's actually a sale going on right now, which is 75% off all Total War games, essentially. I mean, it's, it's a Sega sale, but all the Total War games are included in, in, within that. So, for example, you know, Attila, it was released a year ago. It was released in February last year, and it was... I mean, it was... I believe it was around £30, I believe. At least that's what it is now. However, with this sale, it's actually £7.49, and I believe it's seven pound forty seven, seven pound forty nine, something like that. And it's it just basically means that you can take advantage of this sale and see how the games are with less risk essentially, I suppose, is the best way of putting it. Because obviously for some people, I mean, the price of the game, at least through Steam the price of Total War uh, Warhammer will be th I believe it's about thirty nine ninety nine through Steam. Which is quite a lot of money for some people. And um you know, for some people, they'll, of course, they, you know, like myself, I want to make sure that I'm getting value for money. I don't want to be paying 39.99 for something that's unplayable, like Rome 2 was initially. So, you know, you want to be, you want to be making sure that everything is, you know, you want to get the value for money. That's that's what I would say. Um, so yeah, with these sales, I mean, you can get a reduced rate on on the actual, on the actual game, and you have less risk. There's less sort of, you know, you know you're not as upset as you were if it was. 40 quid and the game was awful so um and also the, these sales are fairly frequent i mean there's about two or three a year i'd say uh, maybe more maybe more i'm just making a rough estimate but it does seem that they are quite frequent and also um you know this the reductions in the price for example you know as i said attila came out last year and you can get it now as of today for <clears throat> Seven pound forty, forty-seven, forty-nine. Well, however much it is, but that's a that's a very big reduction. And I mean, uh, it's very. It could be very well be the case that you could get Total Warhammer for that. You, you know, about ten, fifteen quid. You know, within a year. You never know. Um, so yeah, um, that's another thing to consider. Just let me know, guys. I mean, uh, I'm probably gonna go with the refund option, but let me know if you what you guys are thinking. If you're on the fence, are you gonna are you gonna wait? Are you gonna get it straight away? Are you you not bothered? I mean, you you absolutely sold on the game. Let me know because um, I'm still a bit undecided. As I said, um, you know there there is probably gonna be DLC. I mean. Uh, for example, I looked at the unit rosters, and uh, while they're good, I mean, for example, Orcs and Goblins, I'm using Orcs and Goblins as an example, quite a big example, is, ju it's just because, um, you know, I'm obviously a big fan of them, but yeah, they don't have squigs in the game, and, 
at least at least right now, and that's potentially going to be a DLC. So let me know your thoughts on DLC, whether you're going to get the game. Um, but yeah, I mean, also one thing as well I like to add as well. I keep I keep think, remembering things that I like to talk about, but um, I also do like the fact that with Warhammer, there's going to be a few strong heroes in there. So um, for, for there's going to be Carl Franz, for example, for the Empire, and there's going to be of course Grimbo Ironhide for the Orcs. I like that. I really like that element to it, and that could be quite interesting. But yeah, as I said, probably going to go with the Steam option. The refund option if I don't enjoy the pro don't enjoy enjoy the game, uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys are gonna go for. Are you looking to wait, wait for a sale, wait for a bit longer, just 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 say so avoid a disastrous launch. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments, and uh, yeah, I should have a few more videos coming up soon, and uh, yeah, do subscribe if you want to sort of check those out, and if you did enjoy this video, and uh, you know you want to see more like them, please do leave a like, it's very much appreciated, but uh, for now, uh, thank you very much for your time, hopefully I haven't rambled too much, and uh, yeah, take care guys, thanks, thank you for your time.